If you're afraid of your Stripe account shutting you down or you just want the flexibility to use whatever payment provider you want, I have great news for you. Inside of SaaS mode, you now can use whatever payment provider you want, or at least 95% of the ones that are out there. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it, some mistakes I think are best avoided, and how to make the most of the new realm of flexibility that comes inside of High Level's SaaS mode. Let's dive in. If you're new to SaaS mode, you'll see that there's the option now for the SaaS configurator. This is the first place that you wanna to go to configure everything that has to do with SaaS mode inside of High Level. Right now, I wanna focus just on the last tab here at the top. We have plans and pricing, advanced settings, security, and then configure. The configure option is part of this V2 of SaaS mode that allows you more flexibility. And so what has happened is, Originally, SaaS mode, and this still can run this way, can be all managed within the agency dashboard inside of this SaaS configurator area. Now you can manage the plans, the pricing, and even the payment processor inside of a sub account. This allows you to leverage all the flexibility of payment processors inside of a sub account paired now with SaaS mode. It doesn't give you all of the features, but it gives you about 99% of them. So right off the bat, you can see they're making it clear that you can use different processors such as Stripe, NMI, Authorize.net, even Square, all of the payment processors that are available to you inside of a sub account. To be fair, High Level has an open API for payment processors. So these are the ones that are natively supported by High Level, but technically any payment processor can integrate with High Level function inside of the sub account there, and you can use it with SaaS mode now because of this sub account connection. And so the first thing you want to do is add a sub account. You're going to pick a priority of one sub account. You see, I've already chosen one, which is our uh, HLPT demo account in there. But you can search whichever sub account you want to start processing payments in. So typically, this is the name of your SaaS. So if I was running this under Matt Funnels, I would choose the account for Matt Funnels. This is also the one where you want your payment processor connected. Typically, it's the one where you want to have your funnels live, where people are transacting and probably want to manage like the CRM and all the typical other business functions of your software there. So you would add the account in. And what this does is it allows products and subscriptions to be created and managed inside of the payments module. Previously, how it worked was SAS, the, the SaaS configurator would create products inside of Stripe. Then you would connect the same Stripe account inside of that sub account, and then you would import products from Stripe into the sub account. Now you don't need to do that. Now the products are created natively inside of the sub account, and then they can work with whichever payment processor you want to use. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch over. It actually has a quick button there to switch to that sub account. So after you've added the sub account, you can actually just switch into the sub account and you have a couple of different options there inside of the payments area. So on the left, we have the payments and we're gonna go specifically over to products. And this is where you can now create SaaS plan products. You see they're appropriately tagged as SaaS plan, which I super appreciate it. It used to be called, I think, agency plan or something like that. Um, and so now you can still import from Stripe if you have legacy products and you're just switching over into V2 of SaaS mode. But now if you have a plan right here for whatever it is, so when I go to create the product, because, because this sub account has been designated as a SaaS mode owner account, you have the option to use it as a SaaS product. That means it's connected to the automated function of creating a sub account, uh, assigning access, you know, configuring for uh, payments or you know, like the usage fees, all those sort of things, controlling whether they get a password or not. Um, and so now you can you have both of these options: the online store, which we're not covering now. You can see another video about that, or the SaaS product. This is the one we would turn on, and um, and you can build your you know, build your product out. Most of the details here are actually not super relevant to the SaaS mode configurator because some of them like the media, this applies to the online store. The description, this is helpful, uh, more so for internal management, but it does also show inside of, well, your payment processor. And you can designate tax things, um, all sorts of settings in there. But at the bottom, we have this extra option because we've turned on SaaS to now 
do some of the things that you previously might have done inside of the SAS configurator. And so these five tabs for the category, the limits, features, any credits, and then rebilling pieces you can put into here. One thing to know about categories um, is the main function is to create sort of logic for upgrading and downgrading as well as currency. If for some reason you're uh, wanting to use a different, well, not some reason, you're in a different country, you have a different currency, or you're trying to run multiple currencies, just know the SaaS plan's currency is actually controlled by the category. You can't have conflicting currencies inside of the same category. Um, you can see I already have two plans here, Matt AI Pro and Core, um, but if you wanted, you could always create a new category. Well, I guess for us, we've exhausted. The limit is 20. Um, but typically you don't need a ton of categories and the logic behind the categories there is, um, it allows or can allow folks to upgrade and downgrade on their own. That does create a functional constraint, meaning I cannot have a lower priced plan that has more features. So features and price are only constrained within a category, if that makes sense. So I can't have a $97 plan that has 100% of features, and then a $297 plan that has half the features in the same category. If you create different categories, you can do whatever you like. You can have a lot of variation in terms of pricing there. Um, and uh, But for us, we're creating a new product here, so I'm going to put it into this category. And so you can see this might be a top-tier plan for $497. I can't go more expensive than my all-inclusive um, most expensive plan. Well, you can't create conflict there, so you can't. you can always go higher. Um, but you can reorder them, and this is where it's going to show up for folks when they're managing their billing area. So we'll put it in, well, we'll, we'll put it in the epic category. Um, usage limits, you can set a user limit on here to a certain number of users. Um, for features, this is the you know typical things that people think about in terms of setting what do they have access to. This is where you can control a snapshot if you want to have a snapshot automatically loaded when they load in the account. Um, if you need a snapshot to a sub account, I highly recommend you check out Snaps, um, our Snaps page there, and tons of options to different industries, and I'll, I'll make sure we link it down below. And, uh, and then you can set complimentary credits. Now, this is kind of part strategic, understanding credits. I do not love the world of nickel and diming, especially for SMBs. So credits are a great way to offset some of the usage-based aspects of the software. So telephony, this is text, this is phone, this is email. Um, and so you can add credits when they sign up and then monthly they recur and then you can have them recurring and then you can roll over. These are the, this is the most generous path here is where I could be like, hey, I'm gonna give you $10 in credits. And so as an example, this might work where someone pays you $97 a month. Functionally, you're taking $10 of that and saying, here's $10 in credits. They may only use three dollars in credits but the experience to them is they've got a set expected price and they kind of live within the boundaries of that pricing tier as opposed to paying 97 dollars and then immediately being charged a minimum of five or ten dollars just to reload their wallet and so with the recurring rollover they stay with them you know if you want to just do a one time that's totally fine um and then you can have it like whether you want to roll over those credits or expire this is helpful to understand. We've got another video just going over the wallet system in high level and understanding the dynamics of the wallet system there. Um, but let's say someone, you have a client come in, they pay you $97, you had $10 and it rolled over every month. Month one, they spent $1 <laughs> in credits. Month two, they spent $1. Month three, they spent $1 to total. They spent $3 and they had $30 worth of credits. And then they cancel. You're like, what happens to the $27 right, that I had in their credit account? They It gets returned to your agency wallet um, the cool thing is that means it could be used for different clients at different places there. If you want, you can always cash out your wallet. So if you've accrued funds from clients that are underutilizing credits that you've given them, high level can actually return that back to you. And so it's, it's not as bad as Chuck E. Cheese. It's not like when you spend the money on the tokens, they're gone for good. <laughs> it's just sort of like a placeholder to facilitate the whole rebuilding infrastructure there. And this is, this is a way where you're kind of giving them credits that they didn't know they needed but you know they needed. And I really actually do recommend the strategy because especially for small, medium-sized businesses, they're not used to being charged even $2 for a minor function like a phone line. 
And this kind of like eases that transition. The last piece here is rebuilding. It, it plays and pairs well with the credit system there. And um, so you have, I believe, seven or nine, probably ever growing uh, amount of things that you can rebuild for. And automatically, you're kind of rebilling because there's a minimum markup of 5%. That just covers the credit card processing fees. So for example, um, and I highly recommend you check out that video on the wallet system. But if they pay, you know, for um, email and they use, you know, $1 worth of email, they're actually going to be charged $1.05. You're going to be charged $1. Why does high level do that? Because when you receive their $1.05, you're charged, you know, on average, let's say 3%. If they charged you one-to-one, -one, you'd actually be losing money in the resale process there. Um, but you can, you can scale this up. So you can mark it up, up to 10 I believe for any of these categories. And so that means $1 of cost to you, you could resell for $10 of cost. I don't typically do this um, because I don't deal in, you know, there's a level of savviness for your customers where, um, and, and sort of what's accepted there. And so it can kind of get out of hand, but this is another path for revenue generation or profit generation. Um, and it's called blade revenue. This is actually largely how high level makes its money. And uh, you can kind of participate in the same process there. And so the last piece here is going to be um, the prices. You can set monthly, yearly, and then you can pre-designate a compare at price and a trial period if you want to do a 14-day 14 14-day 14 trial, 30-day trial. Um, this is purely strategic. I do not recommend trials. They, uh, I do not recommend free trials. There are much better ways to um, get someone started that can be low barrier, but free trials are often exploited by scammers and uh, they just generally get a low commitment, low adoption. Um, but so this is how you create the product. So we're going to go ahead and I think I do need to set a price in there. So we're going to make this one uh, 97 and uh, 997. We don't have to set those other things. I believe it'll let me just save and add the product in there. So that was our core product. And um, to the actual purpose of uh, initially of, of this... <laughs> this piece here is in integrations, you can set up different payment integrations. So now you're not limited to only Stripe. You can connect with authorized.net, NMI, which even a lot of like fringe payment processors are actually running on authorized.net and NMI. For instance, if I use Chase as my processor, they're actually using authorized.net. Um, but so Stripe, PayPal, authorized.net, NMI, any of those that you have connected now they can purchase the product and it runs SaaS mode similar to the V1, as they're calling it, of the SaaS mode configurator. One big limitation um, that I'll talk to you about is if I come back to our agency view here and look at the SaaS configurator, and depending on when you're watching this, this may no longer be a limitation, but at the time of this video release, there is a limitation in terms of the ability to upgrade or downgrade with what they're calling the V2 of um, the SaaS configurator. So we'll get that loaded up and I'll show you what that means. So when we were talking about the um, our ability to have those plans in order in a certain category, as you can see, for the V2 SaaS configurator, upgrading is not available. I, I think that actually applies to upgrading and downgrading, but there's there's a function here where when they upgrade, you can add the additional features. Um, if you're using the V2 SaaS configurator, which is basically for additional processors, right now, like you can take their money, but it's not actually going to give them more features. So the way to combat that is if you make your divide of plans, uh, less to do about features and more to do about a snapshot or something else like that or additional access separate from the software um but that's that's the, the one limitation i want to keep in mind and so i'll leave you with this thought and advice as you're going out there and launching if you are new my recommendation is start with one price and one plan most of the big folks that you've seen and observed that have multiple plans multiple pricing do not start that way high level started simply one price one plan we started simply one price, one plan. And for initial traction, what's working against you is confusion. So as you're doing all of this, you know, don't, don't major in the minors. Pick one price, one plan, get a customer, and um, 
and start working in that way. And if you need some accountability, we've got an amazing community um, and I'll link down below to that um, and I'll see you on the next video.